all our students so far what we did was we studied the impulse momentum equation the principle of impulse momentum okay? we have studied this right i told you the next video i will get you the principle of conservation of momentum okay we will just discuss the basic we will not get into details if you want to see details of uh, the principle of conservation of momentum please go and watch my playlist this series i'm preparing is the lecture on mechanics where the emphasis is purely on the theoretical aspects we will not get into too many things basics of uh, the uh, momentum generally when students study they have this confusion in their mind impulse momentum and law of conservation of momentum so the idea today is to just clarify and differentiate between the two that principle of conservation of momentum is a different principle and then the impulse momentum principle is a different principle okay let's talk about the principle of conservation of momentum if you want to see a lot of detail about principle of conservation of momentum go to my playlist you will find and in the subsequent series i will bring more numericals and conceptual questions on principle of momentum conservation of momentum okay so we've already done this let's do the part 2 of this video which is the principle of conservation of okay. this is the principle we are referring to all right I am going to draw a diagram. I won't speak. Just have a look at the diagram. All right. So what I've drawn is this. Okay, have a look at it. This is the situation where the there are two balls of mass m1 and m2. Okay. The ball number one is running with a velocity u1. The second ball is running with velocity u2. Don't worry about the direction. In my case, they are moving in the opposite direction. They can also approach each other, which means the velocity of u2 can be reversed. Okay, this is only for the ease. I can also show the velocity u2 in this direction. They collide, right? But anyway, now what happens is maybe u1 is moving very fast as compared to u2, and therefore they collide. So mass one reaches mass two, and they collide, and there is an impact between them. But that we have, our concept here is not studying impact that we have already studied, right? When two uh, bodies strike, there is an impact. The moment they strike, there is an impact. They separate out because of action and reaction forces. And now they start moving again with different velocities. Why? Because the when the bodies collide, they have different masses and different velocities. The momentum exchange happens. Momentum exchange happens, right? So now the momentum of this body has become m1 v1, and the momentum of the second body has become m2 v2, right? So I have explained you the situation. A collision happens, momentum transfers happen, right? The and the momentum is m into u. That that we already studied when we studied this part. Right? The momentum is defined as mass into velocity. So let's let's talk about this situation. I will write something, then I will talk about it.
All right. So what have I written? I have written the momentum of ball number one. I have written the momentum of ball number two before the collision. This is the collision. Okay. Now I have written. So there is a read when the collision happens here. There is a transfer of momentum from one body to another. Okay. And then they separate out and start moving with fixed velocities. Remember, this is a frictionless surface. So whatever is the velocity remains the same. The velocity here also remains the same. It does not change. So velocities V1 and V2 after the momentum transfers have happened. Okay. So M1 and M2 are now moving with new velocities. Their new momentums are M1 V1 and M2 V2. See, we are studying principle of conservation of momentum. Still now what we studied was there is a collision, momentum transfer happens, new momentum. So if, if I were to write it, I will say, As you can see, what I've written is the equation of momentum. This is my initial momentum, the sum of momentum of these two balls. Now I have written the final momentum. What the final momentum is here. When the balls are separated out, the exchange of momentum has happened. And now they're moving independently with velocities V1 and V2. Make sense? So there is the initial momentum. There is after the collision a final momentum. Now comes the law of conservation of momentum. If you notice, there is no external force on the system. Now what is the system? Okay. The boundary I have drawn is called the system. It's a system of two balls which are moving. The two balls are colliding. Exchange of momentum is happening. Have I applied any external force to it? As in, have I pushed this ball? Have I touched this ball? Have I you know, pushed this ball? I have not done anything. I have not applied any external force on this system. Whatever is happening is inside the system. The system could be a bucket, a big box in which the balls are moving here and there, right? And colliding. Now, since this system is an isolated system, there is no external force acting on it. What we say by virtue of principle of conservation of momentum is that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. And very importantly, another mistake that students do, they don't write this in the vector. This is the vector, which means the velocities u1, u2 have to be written in vector form. The velocity v1, v2 are also vectors. You might have seen i, j, k, x axis, y axis, z axis. So you have to write the momentum in x axis separately, y axis separately, z axis separately, and then apply the law of conservation of momentum. In x axis, the momentum will remain conserved. In y axis, the momentum will remain conserved. In z axis, the momentum will remain conserved. Conserve. So you will write three equations. P initial x is equal to P final x. P initial y is equal to P final y. So on and so forth for the z also. Right. So it's a vector equation. Equate these two. Right. And you may you may be given in the question that the velocity of this ball is known. This ball is known. This ball is known. You're supposed to find the velocity of this ball, and they may be. Uh, equal masses, they may be unequal masses. One of them will be infinite mass, very large mass, equal mass. So those are the scenarios we build in the law of conservation of energy, right? Sorry, of momentum. And then we introduce the law of conservation of energy also inside it when we talk about the coefficient of restitution. You saw the introduction of coefficient of restitution here also, right? Where I had written the equation I mean the uh, as the uh, sorry I think I when I talked about the oblique collision is when I talked about it right so go back and watch the oblique collision uh, video where I introduced the concept of uh, coefficient of restitution 
in this particular case, we are talking about law of conservation of momentum. Here also, because of the different scenarios, the, the energy getting lost during the collision, you will have the idea of coefficient of restitution entering into this. So, uh, one more law on top of this, which is law of conservation of energy or loss of kinetic energy, because everything is in a motion. So, kinetic energy loss is there in the form of sound and heat. And therefore, you have uh, final kinetic energy, which is less than the initial kinetic energy. And therefore, the concept of E, the coefficient of restitution. Now, the so this is the principle of conservation of momentum. Get this clear in your mind. Please practice it. I have given a lot of conceptual clarity on the law of conservation of momentum through my other videos also. There is a complete playlist on momentum itself. You should you go and watch. So two things, right? One is the impulse momentum equation. The second is law of conservation of momentum, right? These two should be on your tips when you do the numerical. If you want to get into detail of law of conservation of momentum coupled with First, go and do law of conservation of momentum where you keep a very large body, very small body. Just try and see what happens. How does the exchange of momentum happens? If it's a very large body and you go and collide with it, what happens to your momentum? Do you get rebound, right? So idea of restitution, we will discuss in a subsequent video. But for now, I think this is good. Please subscribe to this channel. You will see some fantastic lectures on mechanics, very elementary, basic stuff which is very useful and students tend to forget. So this is a simplified form of physics and it is explained as you can see, right? It is explained in a lot of detail and a lot of explanation. So thank you very much for your time and look forward to meet you soon.